Hello and welcome to this presentation on our paper, Adaptive Chirplet Transform-Based Machine Learning for P300 Brainwave Classification. My name is Aman Bhargava and I'm a student of engineering science at the University of Toronto specializing in machine intelligence and I will be presenting our work today. I'd like to thank the IECBES for hosting this conference and providing this opportunity for us to present our research. So to begin with an overview of our research, we propose and validate a novel waveform classification method based on the adaptive chirplet transform. Sparse representations of input waveforms are generated using the adaptive chirplet transform, and we found that these representations enabled a multi-layer perceptron, or a neural network, to substantially increase classification accuracy as compared to conventional downsampling feature extraction methods, increasing the accuracy from 73.2% to 80.2% on a dataset collected from 16 different individuals. So first, let's establish some background on the meaning and importance of the P300 brainwave. So in EEG analysis, an important class of features is known as event-related potentials. These are transient signals that are related to events in the environment or within cognition. And the P300 brainwave is commonly associated with recognition and decision making. It's commonly elicited using the oddball paradigm where an individual is asked to scan for an uncommon stimulus within a stream of common stimuli. And upon recognizing an uncommon stimulus, there's usually a positive deflection that peaks roughly 300 milliseconds after the stimulus in the waveform. And that is where the name P300 derives from. So this brainwave is of interest because it's very easy to elicit and is commonly used in brain computer interfaces, such as the P300 speller shown below. Now, the main problem we seek to address is that the P300 signal is often difficult to discern. Signal averaging is a common tool that's used to improve the signal to noise ratio to improve classification accuracy, uh, but reducing reliance on signal averaging will improve the data transmission rate in such brain computer interfaces. And so making advances in the algorithms used to classify the brain waves as P300 or not P300 is a way to improve them. Now, EEG data has a very high sampling rate. It's usually at least 128 hertz and is often in excess of 1000 hertz. And so if the samples collected from the waveform were directly inputted to a classification algorithm as a feature vector, the data would have extremely high dimensionality. And this generally has led to poor model performance and overfitting. So to classify the P300 brainwave, some method of reducing the dimensionality is required. And the go-to method is downsampling, where the waveform is divided into equally spaced segments and the average waveform value or the average energy value is taken within those segments. And the goal of this uh, research is to determine the utility of the adaptive chirplet transform in creating these low dimensionality, high information data representations. So, the chirplet transform can be understood well through analogy to other common signal transformation techniques. So most of the transforms that we're familiar with analyze a signal with respect to a family of known functions. So for instance, the Fourier transform analyzes a signal with respect to a family of sinusoidal functions, while the wavelet transform analyzes a signal with respect to a set of windowed periodic functions shown below. The adaptive chirplet transform is similar to the wavelet transform, but the frequency of the chirplets can change with time. They can either increase or decrease. So analyzing signals with the chirplet transform can be very effective for understanding the signals. It can show you where a signal is up chirping or down chirping, that is increasing in frequency or decreasing in frequency, but it's a very high dimensionality way of viewing the data. It's not particularly sparse. So the chirplet transform is not automatically very helpful for the P300 classification problem. Now the adaptive chirplet transform seeks to express a signal as the sum of a very small set of chirplets that can optimally approximate the signal. However, finding the optimal set of chirplets to approximate a signal is an NP-hard problem. And so the adaptive chirplet transform approximates the optimal solution in two steps. One is matching pursuit to find a rough estimate of a chirplet to use in the approximation, and the next is a fine-tuning step. 
which refines the estimate. And one new contribution in this paper is to modernize the optimization algorithm that's used for the parameter fine tuning to make the process more efficient and to reduce the load on the matching pursuit step. And so the figure below shows this process in action. With relatively few triplets, we can quickly get a very close approximation to the initial signal. And so this sparse representation is a lot more helpful to the P300 classification problem because we can essentially compress the signal very effectively and hopefully represent it well to a classification model. So the experimental design consisted of a data set with 16 subjects P300 data, each with 1,000 to 4,000 samples each, and 70% of the data was used for training and 30 was used for testing. And so since classifier robustness was a big goal of this study, we trained the classifier on all of the participants' data, not just a single subject at a time. And three classifiers were trained with each method listed below. To begin with, we performed some baseline tests where the conventional downsampling methodology referenced earlier was used so that we have something to compare the triplet transform results against. For previous studies in this domain, eight dimensional downsampling was used and these eight long feature vectors were directly inputted into the classifiers and trained. Now for the adaptive triplet transform based classifiers, the mean P300 waveform was calculated from the training data set and the adaptive triplet transform was applied to that. Each of the resulting triplets in the approximation were projected onto every single one of the input waveforms to determine the projection coefficients, and those were used for the feature vectors. And these projection coefficient feature vectors were directly input to the classifiers. The results of the study were as follows. The final results for each of the classifiers and each feature extraction method are shown in the table below. The highest overall accuracy was achieved using a neural network with the triplet projection feature vectors. These outperformed the downsampling method by about 7%, and we were also able to achieve state-of-the-art accuracy when we trained on individual participants with signal averaging. These results indicate that the adaptive triplet transform gives an effective waveform representation for neural networks in P300 classification. Some of our next steps include investigating alternatives to the projection method used here. As well, we're interested in quantifying the improvement on efficiency and convergence when using the modernized optimization tools in the adaptive triplet transform. And finally, we're interested in using the methods we evaluated in this study in wearable computing and user interfaces. As shown below, a long-term project of this lab involves the creation of a brain-controlled wheelchair. This system developed here could provide a basis for a wheelchair control system. So thank you very much for watching this presentation. I look forward to discussing this research with the rest of the conference attendants. Thank you to my co-author, Steve Mann, for his input on the project throughout its development. And I'd also like to thank NSERC Canada for their funding support on this project. Thank you very much.